Why did you become a recording artist? Uh, that's just like, uh, that's what I wanted to do, man. When I was when I was in the institutions, that's was like that's 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 what I had my mind made up on. So that's what it was. Institution, we're talking county jail. Uh, no, I, I actually was in placement. This was juvenile. This was juvenile time. Remember, remember what age or what grade? Uh, I was in placement when I was what from like thirteen, to like sixteen or something like that. Can you explain what placement means? Uh, placement, juvenile placement, uh, juvenile hall, uh. It's like it's like juvenile facilities before you get the adult court. You feel me? Like for instance, uh, like Glen Mills. People know what Glen Mills is. A lot of people be know what Glen Mills is. Saint Gabe's. Them like common like juvenile institutions where I'm from. Which one were you placed in? Uh, Glen Mills. And for how long? Uh, I was in Glen Mills for 24 months, and then I got, I came home for like a year, and then went back to placement, and went to a different placement that time. Now, what genre of music do you consider yourself at this point? Uh, I guess like, uh, like, like modern hip hop. And how'd you get into that genre of music specifically? I don't know, that, that that genre of music got into me. I don't know, that's just, that's just what it was. Was this the first genre of music you ever encountered in your life? Uh, yeah. Now, was it a certain song or artist that got your attention back then? Uh, yeah, my uncle, my uncle Kenny, Emilio Sparks. He was signed with State Property. That's my first uncle. That's my mom, twin brother. And has he helped you in your career at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, he helped me. Yeah, he helped me. Y'all, he showed me like, you know, they say it take a smart person to learn from their mistakes and a wise person to learn from somebody else's mistakes. You feel me? So, everything is help helpful. You know what I'm saying, whether good or bad. You feel me? That's how I take it. Now, was it something you asked for his help at any given point of time, or he volunteers? Uh, I mean, it's just like, we like real close, so you know, I don't really even, never even have to ask. I mean, if he heard me going through it and he got the answers for me, he'll definitely help me out. But I never really had to, like, go to him and ask him for help. Like, feel me? When it comes to you two, is it a supportive atmosphere? Or competitive. You two? No, when it comes to you two, you uh, and your uh, uncle. Oh, uh, uh, with me is more supportive. With him is more competitive, and that might seem backwards, but that's how I go. Though he like definitely like competitive. You feel me? Uh huh. Speezy baby. Now. Do you remember at what age or what grade you find out your uncle is O. Sparks? Uh, this probably was even before school. This, this, this probably. No, you know what? It was about first or second grade. Yeah, it was probably about first or second grade. That's when I understood the like severity of it. You feel me? Like, damn, this is like somebody that I see on movies. Whatever age I was when, when the movie State Property came out, I remember that movie like preparing, premiering, and like, so that was around that time. How'd you find out or figure out what was going on? Uh, I mean, through the family, it was just like somebody that always came around, and when he came around, it was like, he like brightened everybody's mood up, and it wasn't nothing like, he wasn't like a talkative type of person, so I already knew it was something about his person, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? People know his body. <laughs> You're right. Now, when it came to O. Sparks, uh, was he your musical inspiration or influence as well? And if not, who was? I mean, yeah, I guess you could say that. Uh, you, could say, you could say he was. I'll say that right now.
Now, how'd you learn how to rap? What was your learning process like? Uh, my learning process was basically like just trial and error, you feel me? That's just like how it is now. I just be, you feel me? Did anyone teach you or self-taught? I really like taught myself, you feel me? I would say I taught myself. No, you know what, matter of fact, I just put this video on my Instagram, right? It was back in the day. I was probably in fourth grade or something like that. I was in this hip hop class, right? Brother, I be hip hop class. That's that's like when I really started like spitting that video on my Instagram too. That's when I really start like. So matter of fact, I lied. Somebody did teach me how to rap. Somebody did teach me how to rap. I was in a whole hip hop class, for real, for real. But I don't think that taught me how to rap because I, I rap nothing. Like, I don't use them skills right now in the rap that I do today. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so. Now for you, was it something you wanted to do on your own or was it a suggestion? Maybe someone even put a battery behind your back to do. I mean, no, it was something I wanted to do by myself. I ain't, I wanted to, I mean, I guess when I found out the lifestyle that come with it, it was like pretty much like that was the battery in my back for real, for real, you feel me? It wasn't like no person necessarily. Have you found your sound yet? Uh, I would think, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I, I would say so because I listened to my music from when I first got signed to now, and I barely even like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it don't even sound the same to me no more, you know what I'm saying? Are you able to describe your sound at this point? Yeah, I got more like a, I got more like a grass, I got like more like a aggressive type, uh, type of drill metal type, type thing going on. So, trap drill metal, something like that. Now, you mentioned that you signed. Yeah. Who did you sign to? Uh, Alamo Records. How did that happen? Can you give me the backstory on that? Uh, how did that happen? Uh, I was basically, right, I was on these bar tours in my neighborhood, right? Well, in the city I come from, basically just like doing all the showcases. I was doing all the showcases. I don't, like, even till this day, I don't know if that was the reason, if that's how I got seen, but I don't know, I was well, I was doing that, I was doing them things right there, right? And then I had dropped this one song, I dropped this song like that I really put some effort in go get a and and, and and that went up. That was like going up a little bit. It wasn't much then probably like mm, five thousand views or ten thousand views or something in like a couple weeks. It wasn't really nothing for real, for real. It was something to me. But and then since then it was just like I I don't, I had got word through like somebody I was working with, like they only had well, I actually told them first, you feel me, but I didn't really know how to call and communicate it, so somebody else called and communicated and get it understood for me and all that. But yeah, that was like the process on it. Somebody hit me up and told me they wanna talk to me, wanna get with me. I've been making a little bit of noise and shit. And that's what it was. Now why'd you end up signing with them? Why make that decision? I mean, once I was once I read the contract and it's like where I was at, that point in my life where I was at, and I wasn't really working towards being a like that wasn't on my mind at the time. Like I was down and I was out, you heard me? I was like I was like damn near like homeless, you heard me? I left my big mom trip. Me and my big mom was living with her mom. We had just had a baby. I'm talking about my son was like six months. I had left. Like, man, I can't do it no more. I ain't got no job. Nobody want to hire me, man. I left. I had went and stayed in the track. Got my mind together. Well, at least I thought I was getting my mind together and, and, and this shit started happening for me. I guess that sacrifice right there just did it for me. And just for transparency, not biologically related to anyone on Alamo. Uh, no, I'm not related to nobody on Alamo. Did you pass on any other offers before signing? 
Uh, yeah, I was supposed to go. Uh, I had got a message from A and R from Three Hundred Entertainment to come down there and come with a meeting with them. Uh, who else hit me? Uh, we uh, what's the guy named Sauce Walker was trying to get me to come talk to him about some stuff. Uh, a and R from Rock Nation had hit me up. Uh, I don't know what they was really talking about for real. Like a couple people was hitting me up at the time when Alamo hit me. Like everybody was like, people was like hitting me. It's like everybody was like really like hitting me for real. For real. All right. But them like three off top right there. Uh, matter of fact, Meek Mill, Dream Chasers. I was supposed to, I was supposed to uh, do something with them. I mean, but shit. Why didn't these other uh, uh, interests from other parties come into fruition? I really just want what was what was best for me at the time. You feel me? What was best for me? You know what I'm saying what made more sense to me. You know what I'm saying that's something my uncle taught me right there. You can do what you gotta do. Just make sure you come out on your feet. You hear me? I went with the choice that was more like, more like. Ah, I mean, I came in this shit with nothing, you feel me? And, and look, it got me where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? I don't regret it at all, you heard me? People be regretting them type of them type of joints, but I ain't regret it. I, I like I like I like tenfold from that, so I was like, I'd be cool, man. Remember when you actually signed? Remember what year this took place? Yeah, yep, yeah, like October 2019. October 19. Yeah, right before Corona. That was like probably six months before the Corona John, seven months or something like that. And for time reference, it's May 2021. Yeah. And for full disclosure, a rep at Alamo Records set this interview up. Yeah. Now, at this point, are you a full-time recording artist? Yeah, full-time. Were you full-time before you signed with Alamo, or did you become full time at some point after the signing? No, I got. I became full time when I was signing. Now, in this amount of time since you've been signed to Alamo, have you ever felt like quitting? Uh, yeah. Like I was just saying, the Corona, that that the the COVID sh the COVID shit, right? That shit hit right after I got signed, right? So I didn't even. I was I still was dropping tapes. I'm saying I was putting the work and I'm still dropping, but I wasn't. There's no shows was happening, so I wasn't really no face to face interviews. So I wasn't really feeling like I wasn't really feeling the the. You know what I'm saying the perks of being an artist. You feel me? That sh it was just like burning me the fuck out for real, for real. I really was close to being like oh, fuck that shit for real, for real. What um, kept what kept you in it? What kept you from doing that? I mean, that? really, like, the team that I got around me, my a and is like, people just kept giving me, like, just letting me know, you know what I'm saying? Just letting me know this shit going to happen, you, you know what I'm saying? And then once I realized, like, I'm a priority where I'm at, I'm like, damn, like, I that would be like letting the motherfucker down, you feel me? For real, for real. Anyone ever tell you, you know what, maybe this stuff isn't for you? Maybe you should quit. Maybe you should give it up. Uh, did anybody ever tell me that? No, I don't think I, I don't think I never got that. I mean, I think I I got that before on some shit like, like, all right, well, if you don't want to do this, then I don't think this for you then. But it wasn't something that I didn't want to do. It was like, like, like basically like a confirmation. Like, you feel me? Now, risk versus reward. What's the biggest risk you took for your music career so far? The biggest risk I took so far, uh, I mean, let me think. I got to really think about that. Let me see. Take your time. I'll repeat it. Risk versus reward. What's the biggest risk you took for your music career so far? Uh, all right, uh, the biggest risk. Where did I go? I, uh, I took a lot of risk. I'm like, damn, what, 
It's the biggest one. What did I do? I'm saying, uh, I probably. Biggest risk you took for your music career so far. Take your time. I mean, I risk, I risk, I risk signing. Period. The 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 make my shit go global. When people say that you that I could have that, you know what I'm saying? If you took your time, you probably could have did it in, independent. But I took the risk of signing. The, you know what I'm saying? Looking back at how things played out, was it worth it? I mean, like I said, yeah, for real. So no telling what I, I I told you I wasn't even focusing on music before I got signed. So no telling what what I'd have been doing. I'd probably still be doing the same shit. Proudest accomplishment so far in your music career? Oh man, I got I got I got a record with King Vine, a fallen soldier. You know what I'm saying? I got a record with King Vine, man. I'm 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 working on a tape with G Herbo. That's like, that's like, that's like, bro. That's, that's, that's trophies for me right there, man. All right. You know what I'm saying? That King Von collaboration, can you explain the backstory on how that happened? All uh, right, look, right. I made this song, right? I made this song Sly. I was down here in Atlanta when I made this song, actually, right? I made that song with it. Like, thinking about the nigga FBG Duck song, right? But let me make this song, let me, let me, let me basically go in like that, but make this song on some shit like more relatable for the other side of that shit. You feel me? And when I made that shit, I said it. I'm gonna get King Vine on this song right here in the studio. Before I even knew I had to reach to even be able to even do that shit. I said that shit. I'm gonna get King Vine on this motherfucking song right there. And I bet he gonna I bet he gonna go at his ops on his jaw. This motherfucker went on there and said everything I thought he was gonna say. <laughs> you right though, that's crazy. That's funny as shit. But yeah, that's how that happened though. I made that song. And then when I was getting my tape ready, I'm like, damn, yeah, that's the one. And he sent it to him, and he liked that shit. He was fucking with it. He, he sent that shit back. Like, damn, it's like the hardest feature I ever did, bro. Like, shot the video, his team and all of them saying that shit. Like, damn, yo, this shit hard, right? Man, so that was like, that really like, that did it for me. How were you able to actually make contact with him and get this done? Uh, I mean, it was like, uh, I mean, a few relationships probably through the, I mean, through the company, I, uh, Lil Dirk signed the Alamo, King Vine signed on the OTF, under Dirk, you feel me? Uh, so I guess it was like immediate connections, you know what I'm saying? People know him, a couple people know him that knew me, you know what I'm saying? Just did it. When was this song, uh, finally put together and released? I don't know, I, re I, what, I released that on the second project, my second project that came out, uh, Once Is Up. But I think I released it before the project, though. I released it like probably like a month before the project, the whole project came out, but I can't, I don't remember the, I don't remember the day, I don't remember the day. Remember the year? Uh, it was 2020, yeah. So you released it while he was alive before he passed away. Yeah, he, he I released that. I released it and he probably died like the next week or the next couple of days or something like cuz I was hyped. And he probably yeah, he probably died like the next couple of days. Yeah. How'd you hear about the news of his death? Uh Instagram. Yeah. What were your thoughts when you saw that news? That shit fucked me up. That shit fucked me up bad. You wanna know why? Cause we was just locking in. We was locking all the way in. Like the project I got ready to come with her, I was supposed to do this shit with King Vine first, right? 
this boy's the executive of Pride. So we is just now about to lock in, you feel me? So you could have seen how that make me lose hope. The COVID shit, that shit fall on me, slowing my shit up, you feel me? That shit happened, then I feel like, oh yeah, I'm about to get back from this shit. I'm ready to fuck with Vine, we ready to drop a whole tape. And then he died right when I get the contract back. I signed a paperwork, I shot a show with my family, you know what I'm saying? I wake up the next morning, and they like, R.I.P. King Vine. I'm like, damn, I almost wanted to quit rapping right there, too, man. Huh? That shit fucked me up. That shit fucked me up, but I stayed in there, and now, right back, facts. Now, this G Herbo project, uh, you kind of gave us a, a backstory there, right? It was initially meant for possibly King Vaughn. Yeah, yeah. But now G Herbo is a part of it. Yeah, yeah. And how were you able to nab him for this? Same thing, same type of thing. Same like same same relationship type of thing. Is there a title to the project? Not yet. We ain't figured out yet. We very about to we very work on it right now. <laughs> we very work on it right now. This accomplishment though, it's been fulfilling for you? Yeah, so far, thanks. On the opposite end of the spectrum, biggest failure, and I don't know if the King Von situation answers this question, but I'll still ask anyways. Biggest failure so far in your music career? Biggest flop, biggest disappointment? Well, my, uh, uh, my biggest disappointment, it was actually, it wasn't even that King Von shit. It was the release of my first two tapes pissed me off. You feel me? What were the names of the tapes? Uh, misunderstood, Misunderstood Drop, and the person that, that, that mix and mastered them songs totally like just did what they wanted with the mixes. And I wasn't paying attention, and didn't pay attention to it until after they dropped and all the music sound different than the music that came out on the videos, you feel me? So I'm like, damn, that shit was crazy. Uh, the second time, what happened with the second tape? The second tape dropped. I don't know, something happened with Spotify. I had like a needed a bug fix. All my music dropped with like 30 second songs at first. Like the initial drop, I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait for fucking losing thought. Oh shit. But that was the that was the disappointments right there. What was the name of that project there? The second one. Uh, Once is up. That's the one with the King Von collab. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in both of these situations, you were able to overcome it. It sounds like. Yeah. You got the right music for the music videos on the first mixtape, and then the second mixtape, Spotify, that bug gets fixed, and yeah. your yeah. full songs Eventually. are. Yeah, right. Fixed. How long did it take for that bug to get fixed or that issue to get resolved? Uh, I ain't even gonna lie. I ain't pay attention to it. I couldn't tell you if it happened yesterday or if it happened last month. I couldn't even tell you. I ain't really even, I really stopped paying attention to it after, you know what I'm saying? In both of these situations, what could have been done different to have prevented this from happening, if it was preventable at all? I mean, I probably could have, I probably should have listened I probably should have listened closer to the masters as they were sending them. You feel me? But I mean, that's that's it right there. That's it right there. Was it just a trust issue at the time? You trusted it to be right, yeah, so you yeah, didn't yeah, check it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. Same thing with Spotify. Exactly. You trusted Spotify to put the yeah, exactly. correct length yeah. of time. Yeah, it really wasn't nobody's fault. Neither one of the, neither one of the problems. You feel me? Uh, that's what that's what made it so disappointing to me. You feel me? That it couldn't get blamed on nobody for real. Nobody couldn't like. That's what really did it. But looking back, if there was a little bit more due diligence on your end, it could have been nipped in the bud a little bit quicker than it was. Uh, I mean, I, like I told you, I don't I don't know when it when it got handled. It could have got handled the next day from it happening, or it could have got handled yesterday. I I ain't pay attention to it. I ain't pay attention to it, so I want to be able to tell you that right there. When it comes to tactics, method, strategy, what's the single best thing you've done for your career? Is there something you look back and you say, wow, I'm really glad 
I made that decision there, or I made that move there. Put King Von on his song Sly. That was the move right there. Because I said, like I said, I, 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 I foreshadowed that whole thing. Like, the whole thing. I said it was going to happen like that, and that's how it happened. Sure. Like, okay. all the way.